So I, I, I actually saw this. I was, I was in a, running a, a youth group in San Francisco area. And um, we had a kid at that time, um, John Keating. And, and he, was, he was from, you could tell there was a lot of, lot of not good stuff happening in his home. And, and he pulled me aside one time. And he would come to all the youth group meetings. But he pulled me aside one time. And he said, I don't believe any of this Christian stuff. Because the only reason I come here is to get away from my house and get away from my parents. You guys have good food here. And there's cute girls here. And that's the only reasons I come to this. I don't really believe anything you're talking about. And I said, okay, well, thank you for being honest. And, you know, you, you're welcome here. So um, I, about eight months, nine months into that year, he got arrested for, for robbing homes in the neighborhood, uh, looking for loose change and money. And, and he, had a, he had a drug problem. And um, he was given the choice of doing time in a little kind of juvenile detention thing or going on like an outward bound drug rehab thing where you go up in the mountains and... And he chose that. So for three months, he lived in the wilderness. And all of a sudden, he shows back up to youth group. I haven't seen him, kid, for three months, right? And he sh shows back up. And on that particular night, I had had kids who had, they, they, in this particular youth ministry, they said they were embarrassed to tell anybody, any of their friends, that they went to church at all, even to youth group or anything, that they just were embarrassed by it. And I was trying to get to like, well, okay, what's the embarrassment about? And... It was awkward, so I said, okay, look, we're going to do a role play. I said, let's pretend, and, and the kids were here, let's pretend that uh, this is the lunchroom at the high school, okay? And you're sitting here, and you're a person who just loves the church, and you love God, and you love, and, and you can't wait to talk about it. And then let's pretend someone else sits across from you who has never heard of the church and, and is not sure about it. And let's just, we'll act it out, we'll just pretend like this is a role play, see what happens, and if this helps us get to the root of it. Okay, so... Kim Plank, who's in my youth group, Kim Plank, like when I was a youth director with her, my whole job was like, don't screw this up. Just don't interact with her too much. Like she's one of the kids who like loved God, carried her Bible, you know, taught Sunday school. It's just like, I just didn't want to touch what was happening there. She raised her hand, I'll be the Christian, right? Of course. So she sits in the Christian chair. And the other kid who raised his hand is, is a kid named Chris. This, this guy had just moved to the area. I knew he was living with his grandparents. He, he was a skateboarder and he came to the church skateboarding and he started coming in for food. And so he said, he's going to live in the non, he's going to sit in the non-Christian chair. And they're sitting there facing one another. And uh, Kim starts out the role play. Okay, lunchtime, go. And she says, hi, you know, I want to tell you about something that has given me my life so much meaning, you know, um, and this, this is God. And, and first, I don't believe in God. He says, well, you should read the Bible. You know, the Bible tells us that God, and, and he says, the Bible is a myth, a book of myths. I don't believe in any of this stuff. Now, the rule was, if you got stuck and knew what to do, you could raise your hand and someone else would take your place. So as soon as she said, I don't believe in the Bible, she rose her hand. She didn't know what to do next. And so somebody else came up, sat in the Christian chair, and he said, you know, it's okay if you don't believe in the Bible. All you have to do is look around the world, and you can tell there's a God who loves us. I mean, look at the birds and, and the flowers that come up, and, and look at all the good things that happen in the world. You can tell there's a God by just looking around the earth. And I could tell Chris, this, this kind of skateboarding kid, was getting anxious. It was getting kind of agitated. And all of a sudden, he just kind of interrupts this young man, and he says, you're telling me, like, look around the world, and I can tell there's a God who loves me? He said, I grew up in Compton down in Los Angeles. And he goes, when I was six years old, I was playing in a park. There was a gunfight that broke off and a bullet came across and hit my friend Benjamin in the chest. And I stood there and I watched him bleed and die. And you're telling me, look around and you can tell there's a God. Silence, right? Everyone silent. Bill over here slowly raises his hand, right? <laughs> And, and I'm over here as the youth director going like, what do I do? Because I know we're not in the role play anymore. He's talking about something real. How do I handle this? And while I'm trying to figure out what to do, John Keating, who just came down from the mountains from drug rehab, uh, stands up to take the Christian chair. So Bill goes and sits down and John sits in the Christian chair. And I'm thinking, oh crap, you know. <laughs> You know, John's going to say, you're right. You're right, and it's about time somebody said this. There's nothing out there. There is no God. John sits down, and Chris says, what are you going to tell me 
that, that maybe I should learn from that, that I'm just looking at the bad things, that I should find some other way. And he just keeps talking like this, you know, that, you know, because you guys think you know everything, and Christians think they know everything. And they come in and they try to tell me there's love, and I've never felt love, and I don't even live with my parents anymore because they're so messed up, and he's just talking, talking, talking. And John's just sitting there listening. And all of a sudden, Chris just gets quiet, and there's about 30 seconds silence. John's just looking at him. And then John, who's this big guy, six foot four, stands up and he goes over and puts his hands on Chris's shoulder and he just puts his arms around him. He just holds him. And Chris just begins to slowly cry and then begins to shake and then really begins to cry. And John just holds him. And he puts his arm around him and he goes and they sit back down in the group. And John never said a word. Not one word. The whole time we were trying to figure out how do we solve this problem of faith John was looking at Chris and he was listening to what he was actually saying and the hurt that was under there and his heart was moved and my guess is he walked up there not knowing what to do <laughs> but that someone needs to be there with someone who's hurting and so he was moved and then he responded and that's the next thing we do is to love people it means we see them we hear them we allow ourselves to be moved and then we respond with kindness. It's not enough just to be moved. We also need to act. This is part of what brings hope, right? Is that our hearts are moved and then we do something with our hands and bodies. We respond with kindness. Part of the suffering of this age is we hear all kinds of suffering. You know, rivers are polluted and, and people are suffering in Ukraine and there's all kinds of racial injustice in our country but we don't get the opportunity to move our bodies and to act and to do things and one of the things young people need is some way to act on their passions or on that compassion and, and that brings hope into the bloodstream as we respond with with kindness and then in everything we do when we're with young people we have a sense of delight You know, one of the weird reasons we're called into youth work is we actually like young people. <laughs> we like being around them, you know? They're fun, there's an energy there, there's a hope there, there's possibility there. And so we try to share that sense of delight. I try to find a way to say some kind word or mirror back something to every young, pe even when I just, I did this the other night with my son, when he had these 12 young adults there, I found a way to get to every person and reflect back to them something they had done or said because I want them to know there's something beautiful about them because there's too many other messages coming that they're, they're failures, right? So, so this, is how we this, is, this is how we try to show love. We're present, we're moved, we respond, and we delight in who they are.